Welcome back to ISY. Today's vlog is a day in the life of a small business owner who also works a full-time job as a healthcare provider. I wake up about 3.30 in the morning to start my day. I arrive to the studio around 5 a.m. and open up. I turn the lights on, take our chairs outside, and set up our sandwich board. From there, I head to the practice space and get everything set up for classes. I head to the practice space and get class set up. The first class of the day is Sculpt. Sculpt is a 45-minute class that includes yoga poses, isometric exercises, plyometric exercises, and light weights. On occasion, we will use sliders or bands. About eight months ago, I arrived to the studio around 5 a.m. to teach class and someone was sitting in our chairs. Since that time, we now bring our chairs inside after the last class of the day, just for a point of safety, because I get to the studio early, there's no one around, and I would like to be safe. I usually turn on our live stream experience after I set up for class, but on this day, I forgot to do so. Therefore, I headed to the back to get our live stream set up and welcome our online students. I start my day with movement, meditation, and devotion. I did not get a chance to meditate before I made it to class, so I made it a point to get in a few minutes before class started. Class is over and it is time to clean the props. For today's class, we use blocks um, and weights. I had considered doing bands today, but I decided not to. We did have one of our students um, hop in for class. They didn't register. Most people pre-register um, and they said, um, what did they say? I'm trying to remember, they woke up at like three o'clock and couldn't go back to sleep and said, oh, I'll go to class, but they missed like the registration cutoff period. But I was glad to have them. And I think I showed y'all, I set up the online, our live stream experience. So here at ISY, we have a hybrid component. So we have in-studio classes and live stream. And our students can see the teacher, they can be um, immersed in the in-studio experience, although they're at home or the beach or wherever they are, they see us, we see them, we give them like custom uh, feedback as far as adjusting postures and things like that. So it's just like you are here in the studio, but you're at home. So we really like it. Um, and like I said, most of our classes are in that hybrid format. Our heated classes, like our hot Pilates, hot power, um, our power beats class, those are not offered live stream. We also have a Hero Pilates. If you saw any of the posts that we made or any of the shorts with our Hero, Hero Boards, Hero Pilates, then you are somewhat familiar with that. We have offered a series over the last three months of Hero Pilates, and that class will be on our weekly schedule soon, and people are excited about it. And that class will not be offered in the hybrid component. I am thinking about recording a couple of um, classes for YouTube. So I might do that. We shall see. Yesterday, after Matt Pilates, I was uh, sharing with the students that the Hero Pilates was going to be on the weekly schedule. And they were really excited about that. One of the students said, can you have it early? I teach 5.30 a.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I may offer it on a Monday or a Friday. Not every week, kind of like a pop-up style. I think that'll be the option for the 5.30. But we'll see, you never know. Um, 
but I'm excited about the offerings that we have here at the studio. ISY, um, we opened seven years ago as a brick and mortar, but the business itself was established in 2016. And one day, maybe I'll do like a, a morning chat, little tea time, and give y'all the history of how ISY came to exist and why. Um, just in a brief, I guess, synopsis is we didn't have yoga, Pilates on the south side of Atlanta. Not in the way that we needed it. So you can reflect on what that might mean to you, but I will bring up a, a video to the channel with that information, just sharing my experience and why I felt that the south side it needed a yoga studio, a very welcoming place for people to come for their wellness. This is real life as a yoga teacher, a small business owner. A lot of things that I do in the business that other businesses hire out as far as like cleaning props and things like that. For me, at my time slot, I don't need any help. I can check people in, I can teach class, I can clean up. I'm pretty quick at it. I've been doing it for a long time. And last year, we had some front desk staff. And on my Thursday night class, I always just felt so guilty. Like, oh my gosh, you're cleaning up after my class. And it's because I've been doing it so long. And although it's their job, they're being compensated for it, I always like help out. You know, when I come to take class, after class, I help clean up. It's just ingrained in me because I want the studio experience to be like top tier, 10 out of 10, for the space to look good, to smell good, for students to feel welcome, to just have a really good experience from the time they walk in until the time that they leave and they can take a piece of ISY with them. So. I love it here and I'm just grateful to be able to share the practice of yoga, to share Pilates and just overall wellness with people. And I, I, I do not mind cleaning up after my class. It's, sometimes it can be kind of meditative or therapeutic just to zone where you are and breathe and let go of all the, the thoughts and things like that. So that's my experience. Let me put these things away. Put the blocks up. Something else I'll share with you all. At my studio, we always offer props. Every class is set up with blocks. At the very minimum, blocks. People may not use them, but they are available. I think blocks are props that everybody needs. Whether you are coming to yoga as a new practitioner day one from the physical standpoint, or you have been on the mat for 25 years, blocks can always come in to a place of being helpful. Yeah, I love blocks. These mini mats, I love these mini mats. These are from Jade. If you saw the unboxing of the yoga mat towel that I did, I uploaded yesterday, a couple days ago. Same company for the that yoga mat towel designs these mini mats. And I love these, I have one at home. We have them in the studio for our practitioners. We sell them at in our boutique out front. They're amazing. That's one thing, y'all. I only want to share and offer, utilize products that I love that work. When I first started out having this business, I would kind of cut costs because when you're a small business owner, like it's expensive, like getting all the props and everything you need. And if you're cash flowing it yourself, meaning you're not taking on debt, you're not taking on investors, it gets very expensive. So initially, some of the, like most of the yoga mats I had, we had the foam blocks, we had um, like knee pads from, I think like Dollar Tree or something like that. This was seven years ago. Even the knee pads, we just, replaced recently because people love those thick pads, those gardening pads from the Dollar Tree.
but um, I really like to invest and reinvest into my business and into my students. I don't want them to have the best. Like, so when they come in, they don't have to bring anything. During COVID, when we weren't sharing props, they did bring their own things to class, right? But since we have worked through COVID, all students have to do is walk in. We don't have a mat rental fee. We don't have a prop mental rental free fee as far as our Pilates balls, our, our magic circles, our weights. You just show up and have an amazing class, an amazing experience without there being anything extra. So, I don't know. I do know, I love it here. I love what I do. This is not a job for me, it's, it's my passion. I do have a job, I'm a healthcare provider, which I think I told y'all earlier, you might get to see me in the environment somewhat, a little bit as I see some patients today. Um, but I've been a healthcare provider for 15 years now. I enjoy it, I love that as well. But here at the studio when I'm sharing, it encompasses all the things that I love. I am a former professor. I worked in higher ed at a university for five years. And I love education, I love teaching and sharing. If you, if you ever learned that about me, I love it, I love it, I love it. So when I'm here, I'm able to bring together all of my passions, like wellness, healthcare from a preventative standpoint, teaching, education, empowerment, like that transformative experience from the inside out. I just love it here. And I am grateful, grateful, grateful that I get to share this practice with so many people. And I've met tons of people over the course of time. And I thank God for it. Working in my ministry, working in my passion. We clean up the practice space between each class. We give a 30 minute break between classes to ensure the space is sanitized and all the props are cleaned and put away. I'm gonna get ready to take my daughter to school. And from there, I have to go by the probate office to get birth certificates. I'll tell you more about that. From there, I'll come back, teach my class and go see some patients. My daughter has breakfast. She's dressed, ready to go to school. I am about to put a load of laundry in to wash, grab a chai and head out the door. We need to leave in seven minutes. I think we can do it. Fingers crossed. I don't know about you all, but I feel as if there's always laundry to do. Laundry at home, laundry for the studio, laundry, 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 and more laundry. I just dropped my daughter off for school. I'm now headed to the probate court to get birth certificates. I went yesterday to get my daughter's birth certificate and found out that they have my husband's birth date wrong. So I have to go back and um, have them update that information. From there, um, go to the studio to teach my class. So that's where we are. I have my protein chai. Hopefully that will give me a feeling of fullness um, as I start the day. I'm just getting ready to leave the probate court. Today was a fail, but at least I came by here. The information on the birth certificate is inaccurate and the representative said that there's a fee and it takes like six weeks to update and all this stuff. And then you have to bring other information to get the information updated and anywho. Um, so I've got to talk to my husband about him coming up to the probate court and submitting the documents that they need to update his birthday. And then we can get our daughter's birth certificate. So now I noticed that my daughter left her water bottle in the car. So now I'm gonna drive back to the school, drop off the water bottle and go teach my class. So this is a reason why I go ahead and preemptively, um, what's the word? I can't, I'm having a brain freeze y'all. Um, set up, <laughs> set up my class because sometimes things happen. If I'm teaching back to back or there's a couple of hours in between, if I go ahead and set up the class for the most part, then that saves me a little bit of time as evidenced by having to make another stop before getting back to the studio. I made it back to the studio. I took my daughter her water bottle, ran by the house to put the laundry in the dryer. I am here, settled, ready for class. Class will start in about 15 minutes. One of our students just pulled up, so I think they'll probably be walking in soon. Also, 
Um, we received a call on our studio phone about someone registering for class. And it was such a challenge, like hearing them and they had sent a text because the screen is cracked and the phone is so old. I cannot wait until the new phone arrives and all these issues will be resolved. So class will start, like I said, in about 15 minutes and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. In our last vlog, Day in the Life, Small Biz Yoga Teacher, I think y'all saw that I went to the store and I bought a drawing rack. I did not get a chance to put it together. Our manager did. And he did a great job. It looks great, right? You can extend it. You can make it smaller. Like, all that. However, it's supposed to be foldable. I don't know how you can fold it without taking it apart. Which doesn't work for me. Right? I like to save space. We have a small boutique studio. Like we're not a 100,000 square foot facility, right? And we have to maximize our space. And this large thing is great, but it needs to be compact and foldable. Like you see, you just, you know, it comes, it comes out, which is nice. But what I don't want is to have to disassemble it and reassemble it every time I need it. Like that's just, that takes way, way too much time. So I'm going to do a little internet search and see if there's something I'm missing or that our manager is missing as far as it being foldable without having to completely disassemble it. And if there's not a way to do that, this baby is going back to the store because on the box it said that it was foldable. I don't see how it's foldable. Yes, it compresses. Yeah. Okay, we made it smaller. Let's see. That's not happening. I don't know, but I'm gonna do a little internet search. See, see if I can find anything. And if not, I will return it. Maybe that's why it was on sale. And we were going to save 11 or 12 bucks, but it doesn't matter if you save money if it doesn't do what you need it to do. And from the standpoint of being able to hang stuff on here, great, but it needs to be foldable. So I would rather pay the extra 10 bucks or 15 for a rack that folds up. So with that being said, internet search or a return, one of them two, or maybe both, internet search and a return. We'll see. Let's see if we can find out about this foldable um, laundry rack. So it says the rack is collapsible to make storage when not in use of snap. So to make, you know, so you have storage really easily. Simple to transport from laundry room to bedroom, other rooms and back easily. If it collapses, how does it collapse? Okay, instruction sheet. Let's click on that and see what it says. Can you make it bigger? How do you, is there a zoom? Yeah, no? Okay. When not in use, pull out to fold flat as below when not in use. Okay, so it looks like the very top, you pull it out and then it compresses. That's what it looks like. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, I think I figured it out. Let's go give it a try. Fingers crossed. I decided to go ahead and set up for flow and stretch, 30 minute flow followed by 30 minutes of deep stretch. Today we use the sandbags and the blocks 
they received a nice deep stretch. After setting up for class, I decided to go ahead and try to collapse the drying rack. Let's see if it will be a win. it expands it collapses it shrinks in it works i am happy i will not be returning this to walmart i am going to keep this this is exactly what i wanted it's what i needed and you see what happens when you don't give up you do a little bit of research it all worked out i'm so excited <laughs> i am home class went great i left came home took a fast shower Dress for work. I'm gonna throw the rest of the laundry in and go see my patients. I just wrapped up seeing my first patient. They're good to go with a good appointment. I'm getting ready to go see my next patient. However, I left my stethoscope at another patient's house yesterday. So I'm gonna swing by and try to pick that up on the way to my next patient. Let's see if I can get my stethoscope and make it to my next patient in about 35 minutes. I think it's doable. Let's give it a go. I was behind this tractor trailer for several minutes. I thought I was gonna be late. I made it to my next patient and I picked up my stethoscope and I'm early. I have about seven minutes before I see my next patient. Um, so I'm gonna do a little bit of charting for my prior patient. Then we're gonna wrap it up. I just finished my patient. That was there longer than I expected to. But now I am done. Um, gonna prepare for all the things this afternoon. My child gets out of school. I've returned to the studio and we have a little package from our neighbor. I just got back to the studio. I have literally driven around America today. Oh my gosh, I have two classes to teach and I am once again tired. <laughs> You watched the last vlog like today is a repeat of Tuesday except I actually have patience to see today oh my gosh or I had patience to see I did not clean up after my morning class because I had to get home and shower <laughs> and go see my patient so now I have a few little few minutes like class starts in like 40 minutes so I'm gonna clean up as fast as I can set up and teach a good class. My hope is that it's a good class. Oh my gosh, I'm tired. This is not sustainable. Like this level of going all day is not sustainable. Usually I don't teach, but one or two classes, usually one class a week, four classes, waking up at 3.30, um, working on my business or, um, Seeing patients and family is really hard. Like, I'm gonna do a, a video on just the level of commitment that's required in entrepreneurship, particularly um, the challenges and the wins that come with a brick and mortar business. It's a lot. Anywho, let me clean up and set up before my students arrive. I Swiffered. Now I have to wipe all of these items down. I can do it. I can do it. The last class of the day has concluded. I'm going to get ready to clean up and head home to shower, grab a bite to eat, and call it a night. Oh my gosh. I'm not as tired as I was a couple nights ago but I am looking forward to my team coming back and <laughs> resuming their classes. It is a challenge to um, teach classes, work a full-time job, manage a business, run a business, <laughs> um, and of course, be present with family. So I think my family might be awake when I get there. So shower, dinner, call it a night. Thank y'all for watching. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and share the channel with a friend.